The consequences of, of not getting serious are profoundly grave. If you just take the, um, the S&P 500 as, a, as an example, uh, the metabolic rate of change of companies on the S&P 500 is accelerating. Companies used to be on the S&P for 40 years, now they're on for 20 years, soon they'll only be on for 10 years. What this means is there's a whole generation of clean chip companies that are arising and there's a whole generation of companies who are not going to be clean chips who are going to be blindsided. And so the, 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 the opportunity for value creation and destruction uh, is, is really profound. And so Nicholas Stern talked about a 500 billion low carbon economy that's emerging. We now see in countries like Germany, 15% of their GDP is going to be based on the emerging green economy. Um, this is a huge, uh, it, it is the largest shift economically that we've ever seen in human civilization. And if we don't grasp that in Canada, uh, it's to our profound loss. The biggest legislation we've had in Ontario, of course, is the uh, Green Economy Act. And uh, that's a step in the right direction in two, two ways. One, it signals the, the priority that the, uh, the provincial government is giving to moving into a new energy paradigm. Uh, and secondly, it uh, provides a way to uh, uh, ensure that uh, the playing field is more level for alternative energy. Uh, what we haven't done really yet is uh, move this into a broader um, uh, a clean economy paradigm, uh, though we're starting to look at this in water, we're starting to look at this in terms of mobility, um, and now we've got to realize that um, we're creating a market, but are we creating a market for foreign companies or Canadian companies, and will we develop the indigenous innovation, which is where Mars comes in. Well, I like to see the Green Energy Act within a broader shift towards sustainable development and a, and a green economy. So uh, we make a lot of different things, we consume a lot of different things in Ontario. Everything has to be green. Uh, it's not about developing green jobs, it's about greening every job. Uh, and any job that is not green will ultimately not be a job. Uh, now whether that's going to happen over 5, 10 or 20 years is really the debate. But the debate is not whether we can have a job that's not green. So uh, we have to suffuse across the economy this message and we have to provide the, the, uh, the, uh, the incentives to people uh, to do the right thing because right now 80-90% of everything we do is really geared not to do the right thing uh, and not to do the right thing both in terms of how do you create jobs and wealth but also how you, you're, you're part of the, uh, the solution uh, to a challenge that affects us in Ontario and the world and uh, the, key, the key point here is that these problems are going to be solved uh, the real question is, do we get the jobs and the wealth that come with being part of the solution? We are probably going to be in a situation whereby uh, uh, alternative energy is going to reach grid parity before we have a meaningful global regime around uh, carbon. In other words, uh, we may not even need government to intervene here. Price signals are going to kick in, technology is going to kick in, uh, consumer uh, values are going to kick in, uh, not just here in Ontario, but more broadly around the world. And I am anticipating that we'll look back and realize that climate change actually was a relatively easy issue to tackle relative to some other issues that we've got, like uh, topsoil erosion, toxicity, and so on and so forth. Uh, which are much more enduring. I'm not suggesting for a second that climate change is going to be easy to solve, but I think the price signals are starting to kick in around the world uh, beyond um, uh, emissions trading, uh, which, are, which are forcing change already. And capital is following that path. Any business that is, in, that is purely taking a defensive position around climate change is not grasping uh, uh, that climate change is actually a source of opportunity. Uh, a McKinsey survey said that two-thirds of all corporate executives saw climate change as, a, as an opportunity to enhance their profitability. We don't grasp that in Canada. We're still debating A, whether climate change is real, B, uh, how big a risk it is, C, how we buy off the relevant stakeholders, whereas top-tier corporations around the world, uh, whether it's GE, Walmart or others, are seeing this as a source of enhanced profitability. 
And, uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that people buy into the science around climate change, but they buy into the idea of energy efficiency, changing consumer values, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, our difficulty in Canada is that we're just a little too comfortable sometimes. And um, uh, the debate has not matured uh, as it has in, let's say, California or China uh, or Cambridge, UK.